Hitmontop currently sits below never used competitively, and while it is quite mid stat-wise, it does get some solid help by its two ability options in either Intimidate for physical switch-ins, or Technician to boost any attack that's power is below 60. Technician pairs really well with its priority options in Stab Mock Punch, along with Coverage and Bullet Punch for Fairies, Hazard Removal with Rapid Spin, and even Triple Axel which becomes super strong with a boost after 3 hits. Close Combat can hit for some really solid damage along with you know things like Earthquake for common answers, and we can even throw on an Assault Vest in the mix for some added special bulk. Hit on top fits really well on teams as utility, and you can also knock out some fools while dancing around and looking sweet. Alright, look, the only problem that I have with Hitmon Top is that he doesn't, his idle animation isn't him spinning on his head, and that seems like a missed opportunity. The guy, that's what he does, and he does, never does it in the game, which is annoying. But I do think Hitmon Top is pretty sweet, and so today we're gonna show the bad boy some love. Now, if you're into that kind of thing, consider hitting that subscribe button. I'm on my way to 400k, and the support has been insane lately, and I'd love to have you as part of the journey, because you're probably not subscribed. Now with that, let's go ahead and jump into the battle. Alright, so my opponent is going to go ahead and lead off with the Palafin, who starts off to be just an adorable, little unsuspecting, innocent dolphin, but we know what this thing turns into, and it's going to come in and beat the hell out of me later. So, I decided to lead off with the Azelf, aka Bzelf, and you already know this thing is here to lay down some stealth rock and just be a little guy. So, they're actually going to go ahead and switch that thing out, kind of expected the flip turn, which is great that they didn't, because now that does keep my Focus Sash intact. And they decide to go into the big old chocolate salty boy. Now, Minecraft thing over here is kind of annoying. I imagine they probably go into this just to kind of set up the stealth rock salt cure and just stay alive forever. But what they do not know is that this Azelf has the power of big green ball. I can go for that energy ball, get it with a nice little super effective hit, and it is going to do a, a decent chunk there. As they take this opportunity to uh, iron defense, that tells me this thing is uh, going to be body pressing and hit pretty hard. However, I don't care about the physical defense here as I do have that coverage with the energy ball. And as they realize that, it's probably not going to be able to stay alive for too long. They're actually going to go ahead and commit the Terra. So, by not wanting to get destroyed by energy balls, they're actually going to go for the Terra Steel, which is relatively fine by me as they put the axe on this big crazy salt gorilla's head. It is looking pretty menacing over there. And now an energy ball isn't going to do a whole lot. But there's always that chance for a spadef drop and we do not get it. So this now allows them to go for the Salt Cure. Now the good thing about Azelf is we don't really care too much about body presses and the Salt Cure is actually going to break the Focus Sash, which is mostly fine. Now the good thing is, as they do tear it into Steel, obviously I don't have the coverage with Energy Ball. However, Azelf has basically one good thing about him, and that is uh, it does learn a ton of moves, and I do have coverage now with the Flamethrower. So now I'm going to go ahead and melt the guy with a nice little Flamethrower. And it actually does take it still pretty nicely and allows it to continue to just throw salt in my eyes, which is honestly pretty damn rude. That would hurt pretty bad, especially after you got some open wounds. Kind of an evil guy if you think about it. So, I'm continually taking damage from that, but again, now we have this thing to a point where another flamethrower kills it. And if they do want to save this thing, something's going to have to come in and deal with the Azelf. However, this thing is pretty much wasted at this point. It's slow, it doesn't have a lot of health, and they just decide to sack off the guard. So... I am totally fine with that. That is, again, one of the most annoying Pokemon to play against. And also, it's very satisfying to take it, not only that out, but also their option to Terra. So, Azelf at this point is pretty damn low after some more Salt, and they now decide to go into the Grimmsnarl. So, Buddy's Waste is snatched, and this thing is here to, I imagine, be able to set up both Light Screen and Reflect with the Light Clay item to make it stick around. And uh, if Garganacle wasn't annoying enough, this thing is also annoying. So, I decided to stay in here. Um, and just go for an energy ball. The reason for that is just because Azelf doesn't look super useful here, and while I do want to get Bruxish in to be able to Psychic Fangs away these screens, it is going to... I can't really switch it in now, obviously. So, uh, as I go for that energy ball, I end up getting a crit. I kind of just roll for a special defense drop as they do set up that light screen, and honestly, we've got a pretty damn good chunk on the guy as uh, I think he's going to flex out some Reflect here. So, I'm just continuing to energy ball here, basically just for that option for the special defense drop, but also... Um, Azelf is not super useful for me in the remainder of this matchup. So as I let this thing go down to the Salt Cure, that's going to give me a fresh little matchup on whatever in whatever I want to bring in against this fella. Now, they do have both the screens up. However, I decide this is a pretty good opportunity to bring in the Jolteon. Kind of depending on what type of coverage this thing is working with. I feel like I can go for a nice little free Calm Mind here. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We're out here meditating in the cafe. 
And we're going to get that nice little plus one special attack uh, and a special defense. So, of course, this is a quick feat Jolteon. If you've somehow missed the Jolteon video, I recommend going back and taking a look at it because uh, quick feet Jolteon kind of goes crazy. Now, they do have the coverage with the spirit break, and that is annoying because now that just cancels out my special attack boost, you know, from that calm mind. And at this point, I, I do get my quick feet activated with that flame orb, and I'm faster than everything on their team. So I go for that alluring voice, which will take care of that boy, Young Snarl. So that thing is great to see gone because now they can't get up screens and also, you know, pranks or nonsense to be had today. So Jolteon's kind of a sitting duck at this point. I know that I outspeed everything. However, uh, not being at plus one special attack, I'm not going to have super a lot of firepower through the light screen. So they do decide to go into the dolphin. This thing is looking crazy as hell. It is now a superhero and I feel like a jet punch is coming my way. Obviously, they probably want to go for that priority. They know that I'm faster. Uh, then this thing can have the super effective hit. So I decided to conserve the Jolteon and now next time the good news is I come in and I just immediately have my quick feet active. So I decided to go into the Bruxish here just because I know that not only can I take a jet punch here, at least barely because this thing is about frail as hell. Uh, however, I can now go for the Psychic Fangs. They do not have the dark type. I am also going to be Choice Scarf so that allows me to surprise Bitch and outspeed the Palafin and not only take it out but also get rid of the screen. So. That's a pretty damn solid turn for our little pal Bruxish here. And while we are ugly, I will admit this thing is pretty damn useful, if not just for the ability to get rid of uh, dual screens. So, uh, the problem is now Fluttermane comes in. And of course, everybody uses a Fluttermane, and that turns out to be quite annoying. Now, however, I have a secret weapon on the squad, and you already know it's the boy Hitmontop. And with the Assault Vest, this thing is a pretty good check uh, to uh, this thing, as long as you're not switching into a Moonblast. I know that they're going to Shadow Ball here, however. So that allows me to come in and they just throw some balls at me and uh, I'm able to take it, you know, pretty nicely. So the main reason why this Hitmontop is a decent switch in to this thing is because of now we have Technician Bullet Punch to absolutely just roast and toast the guy. So they realize that's probably coming. They're going to now switch into the Glamora. Now, bad news about touching Glamora on the physical side is, of course, now we're going to subject ourselves to, you know, poison dipped Legos on our side of the field and everybody's going to go ahead and get poisoned on switch in. So... I do in fact throw hella bullets at the guy and it is going to pop him like a pinata except the candy is instead spikes. So I am going to go for a second bullet punch here. The reason is I know this is going to put it pretty close into range to where I kind of imagine they probably go for stealth rock here as of course they do set up the second layer of toxic debris and instead they actually go for the mortal spin which is going to get rid of my stealth rock but also is going to poison our dude and now we're just dancing slow as hell. He still be he still be hitting that shit though. Not going to lie. Now, uh, the the plan was to be able to put this into range where then I could kill it with a rapid spin and then get like a speed boost in the process, but now I'm looking at this thinking they're expecting the bullet punch and they also have an iron moth in the back. So I'm going to I'm going to predict that moth to come in on the bullet punch and this thing is kind of free game at that point if they do come in on a bullet punch. So instead I go for that Earthquake, predicting this fella to come in, and that is just going to absolutely send, you know, Dorito Moth to the damn Shadow Realm, and that does take care of it. So, Hitmontop on an absolute tear here, and we do still have some pretty good use for this guy uh, in the back. Now, we again, just dancing slow, waiting to see what they want to go into, and they're actually just going to go right back into the Glamora. Now, the reason is because they are down to two Pokemon left. It's either Gl the Glamora or the Fluttermane in the back, and Hitmontop has kind of got himself... A little checkmate here because, of course, I can just priority technician boosted bullet punch the hell out of that guy with a sweet little spin and kick. More like a bullet kick. I, I guess, I don't know. Him on top has crazy clubs for hands. I feel like they would actually kind of hurt. He doesn't even have any fingers. I don't know if I've ever even realized that. Anyway, that takes care of the Glamora, of course. Uh, they want to burn the extra turn you know, of the, the poison. And now the final mon being the Fluttermane, they know I have the coverage with that bullet punch. And the reason why BP is so nice on Hitmontop these days is just to bop fairies. It, it, literally, damn arch nemesis of the guy. And I decide, as I can go for the bullet punch, just straight raw dog it, I'm going to go for that Terra Steel, just to give it that extra little bit of oomph of damage. And with the axe on my head, I'll tell you what, Fluttermane, you are going to be looking like a nice you know, a slice of Swiss cheese over here. I can now just go for that priority bullet punch, and even at the health, health it is at it, definitely is going to be enough to take care of it. And down goes the Flutter and hit Montop, absolutely clutching it. And that's going to be the end of the game. The Montop, really fun to work with. There's so many sets that you can use with this Mon. Um, but uh, I'm really enjoying the Assault Vest kind of just utility. Didn't even need the Rapid Spin, but that's my dude right there. Now that is going to bring us into game number two. 
Now, first of all, I will tell you what, we are in for some shenanigans because from the look of it, it's looking, it's looking trick roomy and that is gonna make things very interesting. Now, without any further ado, let's go ahead and hop into it. So this feels like a pretty good time to ask, hey, if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that like button for me. It really does help out the video and sometimes you just gotta do YouTuber stuff and ask for likes. So, my opponent is gonna lead off with the hat and I decided to toss out Typhlosion. The main reason is because Eruption hurts. It, it just it, it does a lot of damage and they didn't have a lot for it And it turns out this thing does have the ability to just barely live and The problem with that is that now it is able to go for that trick room and now things are all switched up I'm feeling fast, but then I'm feeling slow and one way that I can kind of combat that is with priority So this team is working with some double bullet punch action Which I think is fun and I just decided to go right into the scissor here and he's gonna use its weird had attachment to go for a psychic and we are able to live that nicely so while I don't want to super over predict here I have the option to swords dance or u-turn I decide to just go for the bullet punch I figure I'm gonna play it safe just kind of scout what their playstyle is working with and see kind of what they're gonna do here as they do end up switching out so Hatterene is gonna remain in the back for the potential to set up the trick room later and they unfortunately decide to switch into the Embor here so I should have gone for the u-turn to grab myself a bit of momentum but now I am facing down an ugly ass fire pig with a uh, crazy ass speed because it's going to be faster under trick room than everything I have. So the good thing is I do have the option to switch back into the Typhlosion here and that's just because of flash fire. Surely this guy wants to go for that flare blitz on the scissor so I can decide to go into the Typhlosion to basically just boost up my fire moves. But instead I'm met with a big old pig fist <laughs> and uh, that hurts the drain punch. It's not only going to do a lot of damage to now where my eruptions are weak, but also it brings this thing back to full. And Embor is a bit of a problem here, and I have to pretty much go ahead and just sack the Typhlosion. Because again, I don't have much that really wants to switch into a friggin' Embor. When, it, when it's fast, Embor can be quite scary. Now, sadly for them, the Twisted Dimensions are going to return to normal, but that is good for us. And that's because I have Fish. And... This thing is actually working with the Choice Band item this time, but of course I am going to be fast enough to just outspeed the hell out of this Embor. And the Psychic Fangs is going to do a lot of damage to literally anything they want to switch in. So they decide to go into likely the defensive boy, the Don Bozo. And this thing comes in and he's like immediately met by some purple teeth. And uh, a Choice Band Psychic Fangs is in fact a two-hit KO there. And they probably did not ex expect the Choice Band. And that's why I like switching things up a bit. You know, the scarf is nice on this thing, but if you can just get some good momentum with uh, switch-ins on banded, strong job boosted psychic fangs, you're gonna have, it's gonna do damage. So, now they decide to go into the Calyrex Ice Rider. This thing is freaking mounted a horse, and I am just a little dude. So, I have to switch out here, and I feel like this is a pretty good opportunity to bring in the Hitmon Top. Not exactly sure what this weird dude wants to do, but Hitmontop can come in and groove around a little bit and just have some fun. So, they do in fact go for the Throat Chop here. Of course, I can take that nice little resisted hit. And at this point, a close combat is feeling pretty nice. You know, Don Dozo's kind of their best switch in here. And I know that two of these should be able to take care of it. So, it turns out they're actually gonna end up switching into the Indeedee, but he does have some pretty good synergy on the team because uh, this thing's gonna come in, spill his grape juice all over the damn place. And luckily, however, the close combat is just going to absolutely destroy the guy. And um, that thing being part normal really helps you boy out. So, that takes care of Ndidi, but the bad news is, with the psychic terrain up, that blocks priority. Now, my, one of the ways I try to get around the trick room and all the weird speed is just by going for priority. But instead, now I cannot bullet punch this Flutter main. And while Hitmontop would love to do it, go for that Terra, I cannot. Dude, this thing's going to be protected by the damn terrain. And I do have to switch out of here. So I decided to go into the Azelf. And the reason for that is because this thing is good at a few things. And mainly coming in and dying. And it's <laughs> it's just looking like, in general, this thing is not... It, it's not... Listen, this Azelf is here just because I like Azelf. And it kind of sucks. But I come in, I get knocked down in my Focus Ash, which at least does stall out another turn of that Psychic Terrain. And it is good to know that at least Ndidi cannot come back in and uh, set that up. Because Buddy is dead. So... Azelf gets sacked off, and now I'm able to switch into whatever I like pretty freely. So I'm gonna get in. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start squanching here. I decided to go into the Jolteon just because, um, while I am gonna be slower, I know that I can take one attack from this thing because this Jolteon has HP investment over speed because we're quick feet. So as they go for the Shadow Ball, that does do a whole bunch of damage and now allows me to go for the Calm Mind. They're probably thinking, hey, that's fine by me. 
I'm able to just outspeed, and even with a plus one, I should be able to kill, you know, with another Shadow Ball. But we actually get that Quick Feet active with the Flame Orb, and now we're zooming. Jolteon is definitely going to be faster, and at this point, I can fire off a nice little plus one uh, Thunderbolt. So it does turn out that Homie has some decisions to make, and something has to die, because they decide to switch into Hatterene, and they figure they're going to give up on the Trick Room, and uh, basically just sack off the hat. And uh, the thing tried to sort me into Slytherin, not having it today. That does take care of it. So Jolteon is still in a pretty good position here. That's just because I'm quick. You know, I have uh, a plus one special attack, and we're feeling pretty nice here. Not a lot of people expect the extremely speedy Jolteon, but they're not down to four Pokemon left. They decide to go into Embor. And the bad thing is, I'm feeling like even at plus one, thick ass pig can probably live a T Bolt, but it actually does take care of it. And I think that is purely because over Timid, I'm actually modest. Since I have the quick feet, I don't need to get the extra speed from Timid. And that extra boost in special attack it really helps us out there. So with that thing gone, we're feeling pretty solid. And uh, they're able to go back into the freaking Calyrex, who does have two abilities at the same damn time. This thing is broken as hell. And uh, again, I don't, I don't know what the hell this horse wants to do, if I'm going to be honest. They're actually going to go ahead and commit the Terra at this point. And so this thing is... Quite scary. Bad news about the Terra is that now they're going into grass. I'm not going to be able to have the super effective, uh, you know, bullet punch. And some of the main things we're afraid of in the back again are going to be that Flutter Main. So as I go for the Thunderbolt here is now going to be a resisted hit. Does knock it to half, and we also do get the Para. So this thing is built to be slow anyway, which is funny because it's a, a guy on a horse that's slow. But they can finish me off with the Glacial Lance and absolutely destroy my ass. So they did have to at least use the Terra to be able to get through the uh, the Jolteon, Jolteon sweep. And now, even with the Chilling Nay, this thing is chilling quite damn scary. So I know that at least, you know, it's slow and it's paralyzed, so there's like a chance it won't even be able to attack. And I'm just gonna go right back into Alolan Jinx. I can go for now the Psychic Fangs. Nothing can switch into this, especially with that Choice Band. They've seen the damage. Dondozo can't handle it. And that does take care of our weird little Calyrex rider guy. I, I don't know what the hell that thing's deal is. What a weird, what a weird <laughs> setup. So, uh, the Psychic Train does go away, and that is actually very important, because now one of my win conditions, especially against things like the very scary Fluttermane, is going to be my Bullet Punchers. So, I'm actually just going to switch right into the Hitmontop. Reason is because, again, they pretty much have to go for the Shadow Ball if they want to kill uh, the Bruxish here, I think. I don't know if a Moonblast kills if it's not Specs. Uh, but I bring Buddy in, and we're just absolutely grooving once again. And the Shadow Ball is going to knock us down quite a bit. It honestly does look like Specs damage, but I'm not exactly sure. Um, but good thing is I can now just go for that Bullet Punch. And uh, they're actually going to... They know the Bullet Punch is coming. They've seen the Bullet Punching capabilities of our boy Montop, and they're just going to go right into Dondozo. So at least I'm able to get, you know, a pretty meaningless chip there with the old Bullet Punch. But... It's looking like I can outspeed here and finish it with the close combat, which is amazing. Punching the hell out of that fish before it's able to... Sorry, I guess it's a whale. The, the whale fish. The catfish whale. I don't know what this thing's deal is either. But I do know one thing, and that's a, it's dead as hell. We punch the shit out of it, and down goes the Dondozo. So, my guy is down to one Pokemon left, and luckily it's Fluttermane, and I have my Fluttermane killer in full position here. They do not have the Psychic Train to block the priority. And you already know the drill. Uh, we are going to be able to commit the nice little Terra Steel just for that extra damage in case this thing has uh, some weird type of training where it can, you know, live a technician boosted hit. But one thing is for sure, especially with the axe on our head, with that extra stab damage, a bullet punch is going to be able to come through. And these club hands are striking once again. But he's got some holes in him, and down goes the Flutter Main. And uh, call this hit on top the damn Flutter Main Killer because. That's what we do best out here. And that is going to be the end of the game. So I thought that was just a kind of a fun match. A good, solid kind of full team effort. And while Hitmontop isn't generally meant to be the star of the squad, sometimes it just deserves the spotlight. And that was uh, what we're working with today. So again, thank you guys very much for watching. For real, the support on these videos has been absolutely nuts lately. And I've been having a lot of fun with it. I am cooking up some more crazy teams. If you do have any recommendations or things you want to see me use, definitely leave a comment because I do read every single one of them. And uh, I will see you guys later. Peace out.